Welcome to the Business School video interview series. I'm with uh, Harry D, an MBA student at uh, HKUST Business School. Harry, thanks very much for being with us. Thank you. Um, perhaps uh, before we talk in detail about your experience uh, here in Hong Kong, uh, just a little bit about uh, your background. Sure. Um, so before moving to Hong Kong, uh, I was living in the UK. I was born there, born in Manchester. Um, but worked in London for uh, around seven years, uh, specifically in the investor relations industry, uh, which is not an industry that many people have, have heard about, mm. uh, but I went straight from university into that. Uh, working for a small business, there were six of us when we first started, uh, and over seven years we grew it to a business of 12 people, mm. so uh, very hands-on uh, small business experience. Uh, and. I like to call that my, my practical MBA. So before I even came to school here, uh, I was learning on the job. Mm. And perhaps we can discuss this later, but the reason for pursuing an MBA, which is something that a lot of people think about, is uh, uh, was really to attach the theory and experiences from other business people and also the global perspective to the hands-on experience that I'd had in London. Right. Now, of course, uh, ed education uh, at the University of Manchester. Mm. Um, you also had uh, non-profit experience with um, a project in, in Africa. Um, so looking for that international experience, wh why business school in Asia in particular? Well, I think the obvious and, and probably much touted point uh, around Asia is that there's a lot of uh, activity here. It is the area of growth. Uh, and back in London, we used to read about it on an increasingly regular basis. Uh, and I think it's very hard to ignore that uh, trend, which is, uh, is clearly happening. So I had the decision, uh, I was based in London, and my wife and I knew we wanted to move out of Europe and expand our experience. Uh, and we had the decision to make between uh, moving to, say, the US, other parts of Europe, uh, and Asia. And I think, so certainly from a fundamentals perspective, uh, Asia is, is hugely attractive. Um, the question was whether to get that education uh, in terms of MBA in the US and then try to move out into Asia mm. or to go direct there. Um, so I spend a lot of time, as I'm sure everyone does, analyzing different schools, the merits of each uh, establishment. And when I came across HKUST, I was really impressed with both the profile in terms of rankings, but Probably more importantly to me, the quality um, of, the, of the staff and the tuition based on what people uh, were saying who'd actually gone through the experience. Mm -hmm. there, the, the, there was really good feedback from people who'd gone through uh, the HKUST uh, program. Mm -hmm. uh, and it became very clear to me that the quality of education you were getting out here was easily comparable with that of the top schools in the US. So once I put those two aspects together, that you could actually go direct to Asia um, and, and combine a great education and really be in the center of, of where, where all the exciting action is at the moment, that really made it obvious to me. Do you feel that the learning is um, Asia-specific, or it, would it be globally applicable? Definitely global. Mm. So I, I guess one concern by coming to a school in Asia was that it would, I would only learn about one particular region, but I would say the balance has been excellent. So one day, obviously we're learning a lot by cases, and one day we'll be looking at uh, US companies, other days we'll be looking at uh, Asian companies and European companies, so it is very um, global. Having said that, we do have professors here who really understand what it's like doing business in China. Mm. So they have when there's been an opportunity, I, I can see that the faculty are taking that chance to really dig deep into companies going into China. So an example would be, say, a large multinational, uh, Walmart, for example, planning their approach and, and how to implement their strategy in China. Um, so even though you're talking about the China market, this is a company that everyone knows as a global brand. Mm. Hong Kong itself is a very cosmopolitan city. Uh, any challenges uh, adapting culturally, perhaps including uh, the challenge of language? Mm. Uh, from, a, uh, from a social and, and, and just uh, enjoying the city perspective, 
Um, as you say, Hong Kong is very cosmopolitan. It, it was recommended to us by many people as the easiest place to start in Asia. Um, perhaps Singapore is up there as well, but as a Brit with no uh, local language skills, um, I found it no problem at all really integrating uh, into the environment here. There's a big expat scene. Uh, and I think what comes with that is that people are very keen to help you in, get involved in, in the local uh, environment. So, um, yeah, a l it's a very transient community, mm. a lot of people coming and going. So I found very quickly that people are keen to show you how things work and what, where to live and what not to do. So that makes life much easier. Mm. Uh, so I would say no problems at all there. If you don't have language skills, don't worry too much about uh, being able to enjoy Hong Kong. Mm. Uh, from a career perspective, which I think is, uh, is probably w one area that people are more interested in, um, I think you have to be, uh, I'll be, I'll be upfront about the fact that not having the language skills, whether it's Cantonese or Mandarin, will to some extent limit your opportunities in pure number of jobs. Mm. So, and uh, it's not as simple as that in, the, in that you need to break down the type of jobs that you're talking about. So it, it goes without saying that if you want to work in marketing, um, B2C marketing, uh, here in Hong Kong or in China, you, you need to understand the consumer, you need to be able to do surveys, research, and without local language capability, that's just not going to be possible. Mm -hmm. So those types of jobs inevitably are, are not open to someone without the, uh, the language capability. Mm -hmm. But, uh, for example, myself, I'm interested in general management, specifically targeting, targeting large uh, multinational companies. English is very much the, the, the language uh, that's used on a day-to-day -day basis at that level uh, and therefore there's no problem at all uh, not really not having the, uh, the language skills. Also, Asia is a big place, so it's not just about having Mandarin or Cantonese, there's you know, many languages here um, and as a result English does get turned to as the, the uniting force for companies that need to operate Mm. across the, those various com com countries. Mm. Your partner came with you. Um, you're doing the MBA, perhaps mm. staying up light, late uh, to work on case studies. Um, what are the opportunities then available for, for partners to be part of the network here? Well, I think um, there's uh, a really good community of students. So there's 109 of us in total. Uh, and I think with that size of, uh, of student base, it, it becomes quite manageable. So when, when there's uh, any events happening uh, in town, it's very easy for everyone to get together. So we've, we've hosted uh, many social events that uh, every, everyone is able to bring their uh, partners, friends along to. So I think, and, and that's something that I value a lot. I, I think there's a, a risk in an MBA program that, that you become very insular and people only talk to MBAs and only talk about MBA issues. I think that that is a real uh, trap that you can fall into. Mm -hmm. So um, it's been encouraging that our uh, year group has been very keen to integrate people, whether they're just working in Hong Kong, whether they're partners, and, and getting everyone together and sharing. I think I think that's really crucial and really important when it comes to networking. So, um, for example, through my wife's work, I've met. Uh, colleagues and their partners and have made business connections through through those uh, type of networks which again it just broadens your uh, your base of contacts and, and stretches you outside of the the MBA crowd if you like um, and in terms of uh, busyness and workload I think she probably works just as hard as I do <laughs> so um, yeah she's a physics teacher and uh, th there's no doubt that um, yeah, she's being pushed hard as well, so, so that works quite well. Good. Well, enjoy the remaining months of the programme, and um, thanks very much, Harry, for the, for the interview. No, thank you.